Good afternoon, Father. Uh -huh. Yes, Father, we can see you. Good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. Okay, good. Hmm? You can see me also clearly now. Hmm? Yes, yes. So, how was your... Uh... Yeah, very good, Father. Okay. Did your students manage to visit the exhibition of the school? Yes, Father, I had asked the students to visit. I also went. Okay. How did you like it? Yes, ma Father, it was very good. Very, very creative. Yeah, very nice. Very nicely made, yeah. Okay, so it is five o'clock, so we can begin. So welcome everybody to this mathematics webinar series four. Um, Vinny, 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 Sebastian. Uh, participants, can you please keep your uh, mics off? so that we can proceed with the program. So we have been uh, conducting this webinar for uh, a number of years now. This is the third year that we're conducting this webinar. <clears throat> and we have received a lot of feedback from the participants saying that we need to continue doing this uh, from um, St. Xavier's Institute of Education. Now our institution has become an autonomous institution. So it is St. Xavier's Institute of Education Autonomous. And uh, this is a series four. The webinars are conducted under the main theme, strategies and solutions for boosting mathematics learning. This time we have a very interesting uh, topic. Straight line segments aren't always straight. And we have a very uh, young, handsome, dashing resource person for uh, this webinar. And uh, we really wish him all the best for his career. And we thank him for accepting our invitation to be on this webinar. As I say every time, we need to have some collaboration with you who are attending this webinar. So we have our email ID, maxlearning at sxi.in, where I uh, request all of you to send us your innovations, a small video that you have made related to your mathematics innovation so that it is uh, we know that our uh, webinars are creating an impact uh, in your teaching learning system. Uh, we also present a, a research a presentation every time, but unfortunately this time we will not be presenting. We will do it from the next webinar onwards. We have also got feedback that the research presentations have also 
been uh, helpful for teachers and it has been an eye opener for many teachers and they they always tell us to continue with our research presentation so uh, we have a group of our students who are helping for this webinar we have nicole we have sally melissa marilyn khushbu kileshwar nevil shrishti akanksha riya and neeral and i thank all these students from the mathematics pedagogy group Uh, for organizing the seminar and bringing it to all of us we also have present here with us our uh, manager of our st xavier institute of education society representative of our management father blaze disuza father thank you for being present for this webinar and without much uh, ado i would like to hand over to our uh, student coordinator nicole gonzalez to introduce our resource person for this evening over to nikon thank you ma'am uh good evening to everyone present here i would like to welcome our speaker for today mr anup skarya vargis sir has done his msc from the university of mumbai net with grf 109th rank sir has also done his mphil in mathematics from the university of mumbai currently sir is working as an assistant professor of mathematics in SIES College of Arts Science and Commerce since the past 10 years sir is also pursuing research in mathematics under the university of mumbai with his research area being geometric analysis sir is also a keyboardist in the parish choir some of mr anup's interests are playing the keyboard and harmonica cycling weight training drawing painting and research in mathematics a very warm welcome to you sir over to sally for further instructions sally yes good morning everyone i'll be providing some general instructions for the course of this session first uh, sally can you excuse me sally can yes, you turn your video um yes ma'am thank you so once again good morning everyone some general instructions firstly during the session i request everyone to keep their cameras switched off also when the resource per, resource person is talking it would be appreciated if you all ensure that your mics are also turned off so there is no disturbance in case of any query or question that might arise during the session you are welcome to put that questions up in the chat box which would be addressed later by the student coordinators at the end of the session looking forward to all your cooperation yes thank you uh, so during the session we have sorry during the session we have melissa and marilyn who will be taking up our question answers from the chat so uh, requesting you to put the question answers which will be taken up by melissa and marilyn so i hand over to our resource person uh, mr anup skarya vargis to conduct the session thank you sir hello good evening everyone uh, you can hear me yeah very clearly okay it's really been a long time since i used these dialogues thanks for reminding me about the covid era uh i think it's been one year almost since i've used zoom and uh, ms teams and all thanks once again for that i'll just share my screen before i start So I hope my screen is visible. Yes. My voice is clear, and you can see me also. Yes, yes. Yes. So, so very uh, good evening to Dr. Vinay Sebastian, and uh, it's uh, I'm also delighted to have Father in our presence. And uh, good evening to all the organizers over here. I thank you so much for giving me this uh, platform. to have a webinar and uh, discuss some of the ideas that i have in mind about my favorite uh, subject geometry uh so i have been told by uh, dr vini that uh, there is a varied audience over here ranging from uh, students researchers educators and all so Hello? even though I've got, 
ஒரு <laughs> If you're not allowed to, you know, unmute, at least you can put it in the chat box. And uh, every 10 minutes, uh, I would appreciate if it can be addressed to me so that I can answer your questions. Okay. And, uh, okay, so let's uh, start. The title of my talk is Straight Lines Aren't Always Straight. We're going to have a look at uh, some basics of geometry and then move ahead uh, with something called as non-Euclidean geometry. And then we'll discuss about the concept of distance and then... Uh, we will look at something called as geodesics which is the crux of my talk so let's begin with uh, euclid's uh, five postulates who is euclid uh, i think uh, most of you all might be knowing this guy he is uh, known as the father of geometry a very well known mathematician from the 3rd century bc uh, why do we call him as the father of geometry it's because the geometry that we have today with us the geometry that you have learned in your school days in your degree if you have done bsc uh, and the geometry that we still use today is basically a gift from uh, euclid he has uh, given us a treatise on mathematics a combination of uh, 13 different books called as elements uh, this book is uh, known not only for geometry but uh, also you know there are a lot of results from algebra and uh, number theory etc what we are going to focus on today in our talk is uh, the five postulates given to us by euclid so before i begin let's uh, answer this question what is a postulate so postulate also called as an axiom is a statement which is uh, considered to be true without a proof Okay. Yeah. So I think somebody has stopped my video. Uh, still there. Are you able to see me? I think it's only my voice. You can hear. Are you able to see me? Vinny, ma'am. No, sir. Ah, so no, we can. Uh, yeah, but are I you think... getting a message to start your video? and no the host has actually disabled my video because i have uh, logged in through another device for my video so okay what is your device name i just check i just check hi it's anup sv only the same uh, name so i have written i have asked you to start the video it's not coming uh, can you do that once again please you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it i don't know it's okay i i can still continue okay yeah? continue yeah okay so postulate is uh, uh, another word for postulate is axiom is a statement which is considered to be true without a proof so in mathematics uh, we have these uh, uh, statements propositions called as theorems and uh, to prove the validity of a theorem uh, we have something called as a proof and this proof is actually a combination of sequential arguments which uses theorems and uh, definitions that are proved or stated before that but if you keep on going uh, you know if you keep on referring the previous theorems you need to stop somewhere and that's where axioms come into picture you need to have a beginning so basically axioms are the foundation stones of these huge pillars that we call as mathematics so for example i mean they are they are kind of you know commandments given to us you just need to close your eyes and believe that's it for example when i say the day sky is blue it's it's obvious kind of obvious you just need to look at the sky so let us uh, list down the five postulates the first one is it states that a straight line may be drawn from only uh, from any one point to any other point so if you have uh, a point a and a point b you can connect them using a straight line so that straight line is unique this is kind of obvious it doesn't need a proof postulate number 2 it says that any straight line segment 
can be extended indefinitely in a straight line so when i say segment the other word for it is part a segment is a part of a line which can be stretched up to infinity that's again something that doesn't need a proof the third postulate says that any circle can be drawn with any center and any radius so you have a, a segment ab you can draw a circle with a as the center and ab as the radius this is also something that is obvious you can do this doesn't need a proof it also means to say that every circle has a unique center and a unique radius that's postulate 3 postulate 4 is also kind of obvious it says that all right angles are congruent whether you have right angles in a rectangle or right angles in a, a square they are all equal to each other okay so these are the four postulates but we have one more in the list the fifth postulate the most uh, controversial postulate of all the statement uh, may look intimidating uh, you know the first glance but let me explain it to you if two lines are drawn which intersect in a uh, intersect a third in such a way that the sum of the inner angles on one side is less than the two right angles so you can see the inner angles over here and uh, when you add up these inner angles if it is less than 180 degree which simply goes ahead to say that if these two lines bend towards each other if it is less than 180 degree then they have to bend towards each other and uh, eventually they have to meet at some point so that's the fifth postulate so let's read it once again so that we can understand it because we are going to you know be uh, form our base of the entire talk on this fifth postulate if two lines are drawn which intersect the third in such a way that the sum of the inner angles on one side is less than two right angles which means 180 degrees then the two lines will inevitably meet each other on that side there is another uh, better version of the fifth postulate the one that we saw earlier is actually the or, uh, the original version of the fifth postulate the better version goes like this if uh, you have a line l and uh, a point p not on the line then exactly one line parallel to the given line can be drawn through that point so when i say parallel here the meaning of the word parallel is something that doesn't intersect that doesn't intersect the line yeah so also called as a parallel postulate let's read it once again i want everybody to you know uh, to be clear on these two aspects of the uh, the parallel postulate given a line at a point p not on it exactly one line that is parallel can, uh, can be made parallel to the given line so why did i say that this postulate was uh, the most controversial postulate of all because mathematicians in those days uh, did not uh, really huh? digest uh, so we cannot hear you you are uh, you are muted okay we can see you now yeah no but that uh, you can hear me right yeah we can hear you also and we could see you also yeah yeah that was from my ipad just uh, okay okay then yeah you can hear me clearly right i think the host only uh, muted me okay so yeah i was talking about the controversial fifth postulate uh, euclid himself used only the first four postulates Uh, in most of his propositions but uh, he was forced to invoke the parallel postulate on the on the 29th in the beginning of the 1900s actually these two mathematicians came up uh, with self consistent non euclidean geometries we call them non euclidean geometries today uh, something called as a hyperbolic geometry which we will be looking at further these two guys named by 
named as Lobachevsky and uh, Boliai came up with a type of geometry where the fifth postulate does not really hold. Let us see why and how. So today we have two different types of geometries, uh, you know, broadly speaking. One we call as the Euclidean geometry and another is non-Euclidean geometry. Under non-Euclidean geometry, we have a lot of, you know, other geometries. The two most famous geometries are the spherical geometry and the hyperbolic geometry. And there are a lot of other geometries as well, which uh, I will be still listing down. So before we go ahead and talk about the fifth postulate in these kind of geometries, let us uh, first understand these geometries, uh, beginning with the spherical geometry. So what is the spherical geometry? So basically, I will define a spherical geometry uh, you know, in common language as a geometry of a sphere. Or you can think of uh, a geometry uh, you know, of a bug living on a sphere as the universe. So when I, when I talk of a sphere, you should imagine uh, not a watermelon, but a football. A watermelon is solid. It's, uh, it's not hollow from within, but a football is hollow from within, right? So you should think of a sphere as a shell. Uh, of a watermelon, just a shell. There is nothing inside, there is nothing outside. So for a bug living on the sphere, an inhabitant of the sphere, there is nothing outside the sphere or inside the sphere. It's just the sphere, the, just the surface of it. Yeah. So let's talk about the parallel postulate in the spherical geometry. Now, if you remember, the parallel postulate that we talked about had this concept of straight lines, the topic of my talk actually. So let us first understand how straight lines look like in this geometry. But before even, you know, uh, talking about, uh, before even we start talking about straight lines, let me ask you, what do you think is a straight line? So when I say a straight line, this is the picture that you have in your mind. So if anybody can define, as I said, I would like this to be an interactive session. If anybody is able to unmute or, you know, put it in the chat, maybe I'll give you two or three minutes so that I can have your responses. How you perceive a straight line? You can give your own definitions. Participants, kindly unmute and answer. It will be well appreciated if I just again try to start the video of meanwhile. Okay. So I'm still not allowed to switch on the video on my other device, uh, Anup SV. <coughs> We're able to... Connecting two points is known as the straight line. I'm sorry, can you just repeat, please? I only Connect, heard that... Connecting two points is known yeah. as the straight line connecting two points okay something that connects two points is a straight line very good uh, okay yes thank you yes yes course, Any, sir. anything yes, sir. else yeah it's a collection of all points lying evenly on a plate lying evenly on collection of points very good okay so yes right good good anything else anybody else you can even say that uh, it is the shortest distance between the two points. Very good, very good, very good. So a straight line segment in particular is uh, the shortest distance, something that gives you the shortest distance between the two points. Yes. But that's the answer that, that I was looking for. But then, of course, the other answers are also really good because I have listed these answers over here. In my list, I have a straight line, which is an endless one-dimensional figure that has no width. Uh, uh, to be honest, these are the answers that I got from the internet. I was just simply searching how people define a straight line. So I have listed down a few that I got from the internet. So when I say one dimensional figure, I'm talking about, you know, these kind of figures, these kind of curves, something that does not have a width. Yeah. And uh, I also got this answer from one of you all saying that it's a, uh, you know, collection of points evenly distributed. So you can think of a straight line as a, you know, Combination of endless points join on both sides. Like you can think of you know, points that are joined on both sides, stuck on both sides, and you keep on doing this indefinitely. You get a straight line. A straight line is something that does not have a curve in it. So something like this is not a straight line. 
A straight line is a figure formed when two points A and B are connected with the shortest distance. The best answer that I was looking for between them. Yeah. So everybody, please, please pay attention to this point. We're gonna use this. Yeah. So how does a straight line segment look like on a sphere? So when I ask you, uh, or when I ask, if I ask a bug living on a sphere to walk in a straight line from point A to B. This is the type of curve that will be, you know, visible for a, for an observer who is not on the sphere for the bug living on the sphere. It is straight because he has not gone right or left. He just kept walking straight. For example, you yourself, if you walk from one corner of your house to another corner without taking a right or a left for you, it is a straight line, but for a person not living on the earth for an observer, not living on the sphere. It will be curved. Why? Because the sphere, the surface on which the bug li is living, is itself, uh, you know, curved. So that is how a straight line looks like. As I said, straight lines aren't always straight. For the bug living on the sphere, it is straight, but for an observer, it isn't. So, what are these straight line segments, which are not really straight? They're actually parts of something called as great circles. Yeah. So if you have not heard of a great circle, let me define what a great circle is. A great circle also called as an orthodrome is a circular intersection of a plane, which passes through the center of the sphere. For example, this is the plane that I'm talking about. It is passing through the center. This is the center of the sphere. And it cuts the sphere. As I said, remember the sphere is hollow. Yeah. So you get a circle over here. This is the great circle and every line segment or every part of it is actually a line segment. So that's how straight lines look like on a sphere. But uh, let me tell you once uh, one more thing before I go ahead, the lines of longitude that you see here, they are also great circles. So can I ask you one question before you go to sleep? Uh, uh, how many, how many straight lines or how many great circles can I have on the sphere? Anybody? Innumerable. Innumerable. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So yeah, there are infinite. infinite. Yeah, right, right. Very good. Thank you. So there are infinitely many uh, great circles you can make. So for examples, not only the lines of longitude, but you know, you can connect. In fact, the thing is that you can connect any two points on the sphere using a great circle. Okay. So model of the story, straight line segments are parts of great circles over here. Okay. Uh, I just randomly took this GIF image from the internet, but uh, I found a very funny fact about this uh, GIF image. Uh, you can see an eye on this, uh, you know, sphere. You can think of a bug. I mean, the funny fact that came to my mind is that if you are a bug living on a sphere, an inhabitant of the sphere, as I said, there is nothing outside, there is nothing inside, then you won't need a mirror to see your back. If you assume that straight lines, uh, sorry, uh, ray of light travels in a straight line, the light that is emerging from your back will eventually meet your eye. And hence you'll be able to see your back without a mirror. Yeah. In fact, you'll be see, able to see copies of yourselves if you're living in such a kind of space. Okay. That's a weird idea, but I don't know how, uh, I mean, I believe it's, it can be, you know, materialized or it can be uh, the idea can be thought of further. So let's come back to the parallel postulate that we started with. Now that we know what are uh, straight lines on a sphere, we know that these straight lines are nothing but great circles. Let's talk about the parallel postulate. Uh, let's uh, recall the original version of the parallel postulate where we had two lines and a third line and the inner angles were less than 180 degree. So if the inner angles are less than one, if sum up to less than 180 degree, they will eventually meet each other. But here in this case, you can see that these angles, they are actually equal to 180 degree. It's not less than 180 degree, equal to 180 degree. So according to the parallel postulate, they are not supposed to meet, but here they eventually meet at the North pole. So that's a, basically a contradiction to the parallel postulate, but then as uh, some uh, people say that we have a contradiction to uh, the parallel postulate and hence the parallel postulate is not true. 
let me tell you that is not true i mean i cannot say that the parallel postulate is not true i am just saying that the parallel postulate is not true in this type of geometry what euclid meant was his type of geometry now we have several types of geometries this is a self consistent geometry where only the first four postulates of euclid hold but not the fifth one okay so this has given rise to a new type of geometry which we call today as spherical geometry now we know what is spherical geometry we know how lines look like we know straight lines aren't always straight on a sphere i mean they are never really straight on a sphere so let's move on to something else something called as a hyperbolic geometry another type of very famous geometry it's basically a geometry that is done on a hyperbolic sheet and this is the two dimensional view of that hyperbolic sheet and the lines that you uh, that you see moving on your screen are nothing but uh, i mean they are actually lines straight lines on the hyperbolic disk which does not appear to be straight so what happens is uh, okay this is how you get a straight line uh, sorry a hyperbolic shape from a plane by bending the plane so note that you know the lines like uh, you can see vertical parallel lines in the hyperbolic space over here looks like my internet is a little slow maybe the screen is not in sync with my voice no it is in sync sir it is in sync no okay yes. fine okay so this is how lines look like in a hyperbolic space so unlike the sphere you can see that there is a small difference uh, uh, you know in the lines over here the parallel lines that you make can anybody tell me what is the difference that you see in the sphere you saw great circles as the lines here the lines are somewhat different so anybody can notice any difference between the spherical geometry and hyperbolic geometry or the lines in the spherical geometry and the hyperbolic geometry what do you observe in the lines i mean if i make two random lines they look like this participants please unmute and speak so was it like in great circles the uh, lines were meeting and uh, here they are not something around the right 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 yes that was the exact answer i was looking for so here you can see that the lines are actually diverging from each other unlike in the in the sphere you had uh, the great circles they were meeting each other and here they are diverging from each other they are going away from each other and one more fact that you should note about the uh, the straight lines in this kind of space is that they are actually circles making 90 degrees with the boundary of the hyperbolic disk so this is called as a hyperbolic disk and these lines are making 90 degrees with the hyperbolic the boundary of the hyperbolic disk so that's one of the properties that you should keep in mind so what happens to the parallel postulate on a hyperbolic disk let us look at that now uh, let us uh, recall the uh, the simpler version of a hyperbolic uh, of the parallel postulate it said that given any line and a point not on it exactly one parallel line can be made but here in this case instead of exactly one you have infinitely many lines parallel to the given line so here this is the line that i am talking about and uh, this is a point which is not on the line and these are the many lines that you can draw which are parallel to the given line l so you can keep on doing this forever as you can see on the screen and uh, you will get such a figure so you can have infinitely many lines that are parallel to the line this is again a contradiction to the uh, parallel postulate because there we said only a unique line can be uh, exactly one line can be made parallel to the given line not on the point again this is another self consistent geometry which we call as a hyperbolic geometry so now let us talk about the concept of uh, distance coming back to the parallel postulate and coming back to the concept sir, of straight line so can i interrupt Yes, yes. Let me just take a break and see if there are any questions because it's yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, participants, if you have any questions or clarifications, please can you ask now? Related to the two types of geometry that sir has explained, spherical and hyperbolic. Students, you all have any doubts? meanwhile if you can you know try to if anybody can try to give me the video rights of uh, this another device that i have so that 
Sir, students. we are giving, but uh, you are not able to get the rights. I don't know. I'm giving you the rights, but it's not coming. Are you getting any uh, message on your screen? Uh, no, nothing. Should I log out from that device and join again? Yeah, yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just do that. Yeah. Hello. Yes, yes. Sir, may I ask one question? Yes, please. Am I audible, sir? Uh, so you said that uh, just because a spherical surface means it. I'm losing your voice in between. Is, is nothing but a. Hello? Yeah, yeah. I lost your voice in between. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Huh. So, so you are saying that straight lines are not actually straight. Yeah. Isn't it? This yes. is what the thing you are telling. And now the surface, we are talking about the spherical uh -huh. line. And just because the surface is spherical, it is observed hmm. as a curve in three dimension. Do you mean that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you just repeat did, that? Did you understand I... my question? Hello? So I'm losing your voice in between. Vinny, ma'am, is, uh, is it a problem from my side? or uh -huh. I to listen to? Even I couldn't hear it so, clearly. Could you, uh, Jyoti, ma'am, could you please type the question in the chat? Uh, yeah, maybe you can try once again. I think. Uh, yeah, try speaking once again. Okay. Shall I try? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, please. Can you, can you just okay. repeat okay. your question? My, question? my question is in your pl planar geometry. Means if we are in a plane, then usually we say that whenever uh, the line uh, joining the two points. Yeah. Okay, and extended in both the directions is called as right. a line. Usually we yes. define in this way. So yes, yes. just because we are saying that suppose spherical surface is there or if our hmm. plane is bent, Okay, mm. the line mm. the line is converted into curve or it looks like a curve. Right. Do you mean that? Yes, yes, yes. That's what I mean. Okay. Yes. So, it so is a curve. Spherical, uh, so just my surface, it was planar and converted to a spherical surface. Then yeah. that curve, uh, that line is, it is already a line, but it looks like a curve. Yes. It turns into a curve. Yes. It turns into a curve. Curve. Yes. So yes. can we can we curve it? Can we call it as a curve as well, or do we have to say only line? Uh, the thing is, now we cannot call it as a line anymore. We have a general word for that, and that's where I'm coming to in my uh, in the last section of my talk. So the okay, okay, the notion fine. of a straight line, we cannot mm -hmm. call it as a straight line anymore. It since as you rightly pointed out that it is a mm -hmm. curve, not not mm -hmm. a line anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to give it a new name, of course. So that's what I'm going to okay, okay. uh, talk so, about in my. Hmm. Okay, so in case of uh, hyperbolic, or uh, you, you said that parabolic also, the plane yeah. is simply curved. And that yes. because of that, the line is observed as a, something bended. Bend, uh, yes. Bended line. Yes, yes. Isn't it? Bent line. Okay, yes, okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Right, right. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, Vinny, ma'am, uh, yes. when I'm trying to rejoin from another device, uh, it's uh, not uh, letting me in, it's logging me out. Probably is the number of participants full or something? No, no, no. No, no? No. Uh, it says that the host has removed you from the meeting. I mean, from the other device. Uh, were you 103? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, right. So I was uh, asking you to rename. I didn't know that it was you. Achha, okay. My name I had written as Anu Pesci only. Okay, no, I'll... it was coming as 103. Oh, okay, okay. Fine. Oh. So, so would you be able to do anything five. now? Huh? Okay. Yes. You try to join in. Okay. So again, it's. Oh, I had removed because there was no response. I was saying, please name yourself and all. Oh, so, <laughs> okay. So you please continue and let it be. Yeah. Oh, it's not letting me in. Okay, maybe I'll just continue with my talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll just... Uh... I 
Are you able to see me here? Yes. Yes. Have... yes. It's really a bad angle. That's the reason I do not prefer switching on my uh, video from my iPad. Actually, okay. So let's come back to the concept of distance. So, how do we measure distance? Like I, when I was asking you the question, uh, what is the definition of a straight line? Someone rightly pointed out that it is a shortest distance. I mean, it is used to measure distance between the two points. Uh, unfortunately. this uh, distance formula that you have learned in your uh, school days does not really work in the geometries other than euclidean geometry so how do we go about in non euclidean geometries is the question so let us first try to understand the concept of a distance now can we really say that distance between any two points let us say you have a point a and a point b can i say that it is the length of a straight line segment joining the point a and b of course it is yes. yeah no actually the answer is no because the straight lines as we all already have uh, you know seen that straight lines aren't really straight so we need to uh, you know dig deeper into it for that let us uh, you know look at a very uh, real life example if i ask google to find out the distance between me and uh, or my place and my college it won't uh, you know create a straight line segment connecting me and my college and then you know find out the uh, distance or the length of the straight line segment instead it will look at the shortest path that connects me to my college and uh, using some algorithm it will give me the length of that path which will give me the distance between me and my college right everybody knows about this so we already know the fact that distance between any two points is not the length of the straight line path joining the two points yeah we already know this fact so we need to understand distance in a more mathematical way this is the actual definition of a distance also called as a metric in mathematics so if you have not much background about mathematics uh, let me just tell you that a distance can never be negative it will be equal to zero if i'm talking about the distance between me and myself of course it will be zero distance is always symmetric distance between me and my you know my place and my college is same as distance between my college and me and then there is something called as a triangle inequality where we say that distance between two points x and z is less than or equal to the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and z that's triangle inequality so using this concept of distance also called as metric there is something called as a metric tensor which allows us to you know find the length of the shortest path uh this might be intimidating to some of us this is called as a metric tensor that we learn in uh, higher geometries we don't really do this in our school and also in our uh, degree level mathematics we do it uh, for those who have done msc in mathematics and especially taken up a course called as differential geometry might have come across something like this a metric tensor but uh, i will explain it to you in a you know a very subtle way so using this we can find out the distance between any two points on the sphere let's imagine the sphere at this moment so what is the distance between two points on a sphere supposed to mean but is it the length of the shortest path between the two points what is the shortest path between the two points actually how do you find out the shortest path between the two points let me tell you once again what is ds let us say you have this path this is point a and this is point b what we can do is to find out the length of this path we can break this down into smaller smaller parts and ds will help you to measure the length of this small part it's an infinitesimally small part and ds is a tool that is used to find out the length of this path and finally what you are going to do at the end is you are going to sum up all these ds's i mean you are going to add this with this with this and with this and it you go on forever so summing up for those who have done mathematics will understand that summing up means integrating you find out the integral ds and you get the length of the shortest path between a and b or length of any path between a and b forget the shortest path so let us come back to this question what is the shortest path between any two points so for this what we will do is we will ask all the bugs send infinitely many bugs living on the sphere on a tour from a to b some bugs may take more time than the others but what we will do is we will list down the paths of all these bugs and select the shortest among all those and 
find out the length of that shortest path using the tool that we had called as a metric tensor. Okay. So now we know that this shortest path is nothing but it's, it's obviously not a straight line. It's a generalization of a straight line. As I said, for a bug living on the sphere, it appears to be a straight line, but for an observer outside, it isn't. So we cannot call it as a straight line anymore. We will have to give it a special name and that's what is called as a geodesic. Yeah. So ge generalizations of the concept of straight lines. For example, let us say you want to take a, uh, you know, a, a flight from Rome to Copenhagen. These two places are actually falling on the same line of longitude. Uh, the shortest path between these two points will be actually along the line of longitude because the line of longitude, anybody can answer this if you haven't fallen asleep yet. Why do we say that the line of longitude will be the shortest? Because Yes, anybody. I hope I'm still audible. Yes, yes you're very yeah. much audible. Okay, okay. Because the other device is uh, loud me out, so I'm not able to see myself. Participants, please answer. Students. I think uh, somebody is on the railway station also. <laughs> okay. Somebody is on the harbor line. Okay. So maybe I'll ask you another question. This one uh, probably seems to be a little difficult. Here, actually, the line of longitude, if you remember, I had said that it's a great circle. And uh, great circle uh, are basically the straight lines. They are actually the shortest path. Yeah. Uh, but if I, uh, let us say, want a shortest flight from uh, Paris to Quebec, which uh, lie on the same line of latitude, the line of latitude will never be a shortest part because these lines of latitudes are not great circles. Yeah. So the great circles are somewhat away from, you know, the line of latitude. So this concept of geodesics or uh, this concept of straight lines, which aren't really straight, uh, on this spherical geometry saves us a lot of fuel and, um, you know, time as well. So what is a geodesic? Let me wrap it up. A geodesic, basically the word derived is derived from the word uh, geodesy, which means the science of measuring the size and shape of the earth. It is the shortest path connecting any two points. It's a generalization of the concept of a straight line. For a sphere, it is a great circle. And for any two points, Except the antipodal points. When I say antipodal points, I'm talking about the two diametrically opposite points. There is a unique geodesy connecting any two points. Okay. So since now we have already seen what a spherical geometry is and a hyperbolic geometry is, we have several other types of geometry. Like you have a toroidal geometry, which is the geometry of a torus. What is a torus? The torus is actually the shell of a you know donut. When I say the shell of a donut, I'm not actually looking at the inside part of the donut. I'm only looking at the outside, the shell. Okay, it's hollow from within. So if you ask a bug living on a torus, uh, an inhabitant of the torus, to you know, walk in a straight line, you will have something like this. The bug will keep moving, will keep moving. For the bug, it is moving in a straight line, but for an observer not on the torus, it is something weird like this. Even though it is weird, it is very beautiful. So a curve like this. So unlike the spherical geometry where you had straight lines that appear to be only like great circles, here you have different types of straight lines on a torus. Yeah, I'm using uh, you know the word straight lines and geodesic uh, interchangeably. So that's how a geodesic on a torus look like, or a straight line on a torus look like. So the thing is, uh, on a sphere you had only the great circles as the uh, straight lines, but on a torus, there are different, different shapes for a geodesic. So for that, uh, to understand that we will first have to understand how a torus is made. So you take a rectangle, you glue the opposite edges, and then uh, you glue these blue edges together and you get something like a torus. Yeah. 
So if you have a horizontal line on a, a rectangular sheet, this is how a geodesic look, looks like. So if a bug starts walking in this direction, in this direction, it will finally end up where it started. And that gives a geodesic, a one type of geodesic. If you have a vertical line, this is how a vertical line looks like on a torus. Again, a, a diagonal. This is how the image of the diagonal will look like on a torus. So these are basically different types of geodesics on the torus. There are different types of geodesics on the torus itself. So these are some different shapes and uh, you know geodesics that you can make on uh, uh, torus. This is a cylinder. This is a cone. On a cylinder, if you take a circle like this, this is a type of geodesic. If you take a shape like this, it's a helix, again a geodesic. On a cone also, this is a type of geodesic. You can have horizontal circles as geodesics and so on. Now, all these type of geometries that we just saw comes under one umbrella, which is called as Riemannian geometry, which was founded by this German mathematician by the name Riemann in again the 19th century. He brought the ideas of something called as manifolds, which is nothing but the generalization of a sphere or, you know, a torus or a cylinder and so on. And also the idea of a metric that we just talked about and the idea of a curvature. Yeah. And not only the three geometries that we just saw, but he, his concept of Riemannian geometry gave birth to infinitely many non-Euclidean geometries. And he extended the idea of the non-Euclidean geometries to higher dimensions. So the dimensions that we were talking about were only two dimensions so that it is easy for us to you know, perceive. But here, the idea can go beyond two dimensions. Yeah? So if you have a manifold, the basic idea of Riemannian geometry, if anybody wants to know, is uh, that uh, every manifold is thought of, you can, you can think of uh, maybe you know, a surface of some... Uh, uh, Maybe you can talk about a wafer or something like that, a potato chip or something. It locally looks like if you if you keep on you know uh, zooming it in, it will look like a flat patch on a plane. So this is what the concept of Riemannian geometry is all about. So here are the ideas again taken from Euclidean Euclidean geometry. So Riemannian geometry you can say is. Uh, you know, studied locally using Euclidean geometry, which means a flat space. Okay, so similarly, there are other geometries, something called as subrimanian geometry, which is again another type of geometry which I am working on. So there are different types of geometry. Subrimanian geometry is also my research is on something called as a something called as Heisenberg group, which is again a part of subrimanian geometry. Very interesting. The interesting fact about Heisenberg group is that. If you want to draw a straight line segment from one point A to another point B, it's not this straight line segment. It actually goes helical. It's kind of a helix. And there are, there are these different types of geometries, uh, you know, other than subrimanian geometries, projective, algebraic, metric, affine geometry, and so on. Now, my question to you is, the space on which we are living in, is it really Euclidean or is it non-Euclidean? If at all this question has come to your mind, why are we doing all this? Weren't we satisfied with the geometry that Euclid had given us? Why are we learning all this? So this question, the answer to this question will answer those doubts. Is our space Euclidean or non-Euclidean? Anybody, any guesses? I really can't see the chats and all. So somebody will have to read it out. I hope I'm still audible. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. It will be non-Euclidean. Non-Euclidean? Okay. So when I say the space in which we are living in, I'm not talking about the Earth on which we're living in. I'm talking about the entire universe, the entire solar system, the galaxy, and uh, you know the collection of galaxies and the black holes around us. So the answer is non-Euclidean. So the answer may surprise you, actually. It's actually a combination of both Euclidean and non-Euclidean. The space in which we are living in is not really consistent. Probably if there is a black hole around, it's really non-Euclidean over here. 
okay and uh, if if in some part there is nothing around it's completely blank then this can be euclidean so why is it happening the answer to this question lies in uh, something uh, you know that einstein had given us something called as general theory of relativity where he looked at space not as a three dimension but uh, four dimensions where he added a new axis called as a time axis and he came across the concept of something called as space time so i am not going to dig deeper into space time because i am not a physicist i don't have much idea about it i can only talk about space time in a mathematical sense so let me give you some ideas euclidean geometry remember it is zero curvature flat spherical geometry it's positive curvature hyperbolic geometry is negative curvature yeah so when i say curvature it is something called as a gaussian curvature which uh, you know people who have done mathematics in msc might know so if you have any you know questions about uh, you know curvatures and all you can always ask me you can get back to me later uh, but right now since we have varied audience i won't be you know going much deeper into this so what happens why is our space non euclidean let me tell you we always perceive light traveling in a straight line but then when light travels through heavy very massive you know bodies that are lying in the universe for example a black hole it is observed that the ray of light bends a little it is not sucked in it actually bends a little away from the black hole yeah but if it is directed directly towards the black hole it will be sucked in and it won't come out so we know that black hole is kind of you know a singularity in space something that has infinite gravity it does not even allow time to go ahead it's something that we know about you know black hole i don't know why but yes light rays bend when it moves around a black hole or any massive object like a star also so why does that happen i'll tell you this is how the shape of our universe looks like it's kind of a funnel or uh, you can see that uh, if there is a body which tries to travel in this direction it's a straight line it's a geodesic for that particle but uh, for a third person it's not really straight the same phenomenon happens in the space also when a ray of light passes around a black hole this is how it looks like so you can perceive uh, you know the the bending of space around these massive objects uh, as uh, you know you can you can think of a trampoline you know trampoline and on which you have kept heavy objects and uh, the trampoline will you know bend when the heavy object is kept on it so this is what happens to a ray of light it will bend when it passes you know very close to uh, these heavy objects okay so before i conclude my talk uh, let me just point out a few geodesics that we observe in nature for example a creeper this is a cylinder and the geodesics we have already seen that they are helical also so the creeper side to move in a geodetical manner this is something called as a geodesic dome geodesic dome a uh, structure using the geodesics known for its uh, very high tensile strength and rigidity this is a geodesic dome that is observed in nature this is a picture of a cell where the cell wall is you know almost like a geodesic dome and this is the picture of the light ray bending around a star that we already pointed out and before i end my talk let me uh, quote a few words from uh, some famous personalities first archimedes he says that the shortest distance uh, between any two points is a straight line we know now that it is not true right the shortest distance between any two points is actually not a straight line it's a it's geodesic yeah this is another quote by a famous japanese director he says that i have been told that time doesn't flow in a straight line in my films it goes around in a circle we know that it's true straight lines are same as circles when it comes to spherical geometry lawyers have to make a living and can only do so by inducing people to believe that a straight line is crooked i have done the job of a lawyer right now i have tried to make you people believe that straight lines aren't really straight they are a bit crooked yeah they can be anything that's it 
thank you everybody for listening to me it's 6 o'clock i might have put everybody to sleep uh these are a few web references and uh, a good book i should also i should also mention uh, differential geometry differential geometry of curves and surfaces i think that's the name by manfredo du carmo du carmo it's a very book good uh, sorry a good book on uh, uh, differential geometry by this very good brazilian author thank you so much everybody for listening thank you sir it was a very enlightening talk and a very interesting presentation that you have given with so much of animation you have helped us to uh, understand this uh, so uh, now the floor is open for more questions Uh, so participants you can unmute yourselves and ask questions or you write it on the chat so we have melissa and marilyn who will conduct this question answer session hello yes ma'am go on i have one more question so hello yes ma'am can you tell me your name yes yes can you tell me your name myself professor sonali Oh, Professor Sonali. Okay. We know we know each other, so. Uh, Sonal, can you tell me your last name? Uh, Sonali uh, Murtadak. Arre, okay, ma'am. Yeah, of course. <laughs> But I, I do have uh, this is a nice talk actually. Uh, new okay. things uh, I have learned here. Uh, okay. So you are saying geodesic. Okay. Yeah. Do you uh. mean that if 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 on R one R two, we have defined Euclidean distance, right? Uh, in right. a metric space. Yeah. Now uh, on a on a space we can define n number of uh, matrix. Correct. Okay. So Correct. if the distance is not Euclidean distance, it, it is something discrete or some another matrix we have defined. With mm. respect to that matrix, do we say that the straight the line uh, which we are talking will be geodesic? Uh, see the the concept of geodesic is like uh, as we saw the example of that map. uh okay uh you know there are some admissible directions like for example okay. you are not allowed to move in a straight line as i was talking about the uh heisenberg group that i was talking about it is actually okay. r3 it is r3 only okay, okay. but okay. here r3 is endowed with the heisenberg metric it's called as a heisenberg metric okay. okay and here if you have any two points as i said the origin and any point on the t axis or the, the, the z axis here in this case Here mm -hmm. we are not allowed to move in a straight line because the metric does not allow to move in a straight line. Yeah, so yeah, okay. Here you have a curve. So with yes, different yes. metrics, but if you take any two points on the same plane, let us say the x y plane over here, which are you know antipodal like this, then you can okay. have a straight line, straight which coincides line. with the concept of the Euclidean uh, metric. Okay, it means okay. Uh, it is nothing so, with so the metric. Have... Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I I lost you yes. again in between. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. I I hope that doubt is cleared. We can speak again later if you have. Okay. I mean, okay. No problem. But, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, any more questions? Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, I have got question. Yeah. Please go ahead, sir. Never hear. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so thank you for your enlightening uh, session on why straight line is not a straight line. Uh, uh, but my question is uh, that uh, see a line is a, a one-dimensional figure, and it doesn't have any thickness. So in a way, when you explained it, you showed it a line having two dimensions. You like. You showed it as it having a thickness like length and a breadth. Whenever you draw something on uh, a page, am I am I being clear here? Whether it is one dimensional or two dimensional, so yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. So, so go my ahead, question is that when, yes, yes. when you say uh, 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 when a line is not a straight line, if you could define it that in two dimensional, it could be considered. as straight but when you add another dimension it will not be a straight line would that be a more comprehensive statement sir here 
otherwise it creates a confusion no first of all let me tell you that uh, lines are not uh, two dimensional even in my talk i have not uh, uh, you know made lines as a two dimensional figure but if you are talking about you know the representation of a line on a paper where you try to zoom it using a microscope there is a thickness over there of course it's a two dimensional figure because it has a thickness but here we don't have any i mean that is just a representation of a line okay Correct, yes the actual theoretical explanation behind a line or definition of a line is that it has to be one dimensional whether it is curved or straight it has to be one dimensional but these are just representation for example when i how do you uh, it's like you know talking about the difference between a dot and a point i mean i use a dot to represent a point okay represent a point so how do you define a point point is something that is zero dimensional okay point is a zero dimensional figure so uh, uh, i mean the theoretical way of understanding it is kitna bhi usko zoom karo you keep on zooming it it will still appear to be small it can be thought of as you know smaller than an electron or maybe much more smaller than that but i using a pen in my hand i have no other option to represent a point or a one dimensional line it will eventually be two dimensional only yeah so theoretically they are one dimensional theoretically a point is zero dimensional okay there is no width to it when you talk about it theoretically okay thank you sir any more questions participants to add to what uh, to add to that previous answer one more thing uh, basically this if you if I, if i make a sphere and if i draw a line like this or geodesic like this basically it is one dimensional only it's a one dimensional figure it's a one dimensional figure but it is lying inside in three dimensions because this is a part of three dimension for example if you look at uh, uh, let's say a wire is there our space can be thought of as three dimension I mean, in my surrounding it's three dimension euclidean space so it's a one dimensional figure lying in three dimensions yeah but if i ask you what is the dimension of a line or a, you know curve it's always one dimension yeah and we need to also understand what is the definition of dimension that's another you know uh, concept which we need to study okay sorry to interrupt no any more questions participants sadab blaze you have any question We can't hear you, Father. Unmute yourself. I have no questions. I'm only discovering new areas of geometry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, so thank you, sir. I am really honored to have Father in my presence. <laughs> father has attended And all the webinars. So good to see that Father stayed throughout. <laughs> okay, that's really nice of him. I don't know which type of geometry would you call that. <laughs> There must uh, be some some definition for geometries for uh, ge geometries that include also experience <laughs> and learning. Right, right. Very good. So. You have proved that straight lines are crooked, so that's nice, sir. Uh, I would. Um, can we close the talk, sir? Thank you. Yes, yes. So I will Thank ask Kushbu. Uh, I will ask Kushbu to give the feedback instructions while I just put up the feedback sheet on the Kushbu. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you are putting up the link in the chat box. Yeah, I am putting up. You start your Insta. Good evening, everyone. We are providing you the link in the chat box. Kindly answer it before eight pm. And if there is any problem in the filling the in filling the link, then you can contact in the WhatsApp group. Or your uh, certificate will be directly mailed on your email. Like. 
थैंक यू ओके आई रिक्वेस्ट किलेश्वर टू डिलीवर द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स किलेश्वर हेलो एम ऑडिबल यस गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन फर्स्टली thank you everyone for listening patiently and being an wonderful audience i would like to take a moment to thank our guest for today's session anup sir for taking out time for this webinar strategic and uh, strategies and solutions for boosting maths learning on the topic straight lines aren't always straight with his experience and vast knowledge about maths he was able to deliver this thoughtful webinar and made us learn about lines and its true meaning with a different perspective bringing a multi dimensional approach to the ma subject maths and as father please rightly pointed out it was something that we were discovering new about geometry as to such what exactly is the line so thank you so much sir i would also like to uh, father manager blaze uh, in charge principal really ma'am and the entire mathematics pedagogy unit for coming together to bringing this session to life and finally a big thank you to all the participants who joined and made this webinar successful thank you so much thank you anup sir and thank you everybody for attending this webinar thank you thank you ma'am thank you sir so good we can leave now yes sir okay students uh, i'm leaving now okay okay ma'am